Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bolin and Dr. Spot is here also. And uh, what we're going to do today is uh, just explain a little bit about what to do after you get your blast results. So I have a sample um, here of different sequences and these sequences have been trimmed already um, and we ran them through blast. So we had clicked the button to run blast and everything ran. It does take a little bit of time, so you have to be patient and that we can view results. So when we click on this button to view the results, we get a whole bunch of different organisms that come up. And the top result is your top hit. And you can see that the alignment length is 646 over here, right? We have a, a bit score of uh, 1142, our E-value is zero, and we have five mismatches. Now, what does this all mean? This tells you how long your sequence is. This tells you the quality. The higher the number of the bit score, the better quality we have. The E-value is a statistical number. If it's zero, that means that statistically um, there's very little, if any, error. And lastly, the five mismatches tells you how many sequences, how many nucleotides our, our hit, top hit is different from our actual um, sequence that we have. So what you want to do is look for where you see a genus species name. So all of these right here, this is called Acelidae. That's a family of different types of organisms, which we can't even see right now. The picture doesn't pop up. So, so what you want to do is scroll down so you get to this first one, which is uh, Quesadotia communis, okay? And if you click on that, um, usually it shows an image, but this is most likely our best hit that we can get. And so what we want to do is click on this, okay, and click on a couple of other ones. So scroll down. Uh, here's another one, Kenki. Um, different species, and we'll even try this one, although this one has quite a few mismatches, 110 mismatches, and you can see how the bit score dropped, okay, but we'll do that anyway, just to see, okay, so once we've done this, um, and you know what, we'll hit our, our top one, why not, uh, we'll hit add blast hits to the project, and those have been added, okay, um, then we're going to go back, and we're going to do the next one, and the same thing, this looks very similar, so we'll scroll down, and we have a pretty good match here. Uh, not a lot of variation. Uh, we'll do the same thing. Anywhere where we see a genus and species name, uh, we'll do Casadotia kenki, and we're good. Okay. And again, just for reference, we'll hit this top one. That's our number one hit. Okay, and we'll add that to the project. And then here's our last one. Interesting. Okay, Saprolengia turfosa. Um, so we're not getting any type of, these look like these might be, uh, plants. So what we'll do is we'll put these in, but here's the deal. These are very poor sequences. See how low the bit score is. Okay. And look at that E value, E nine to the 64th and 172 mismatches, but we'll put this in anyway, just so you can see what this looks like when you have different, um, species. So I'm going to pick this one and this one. I'm going to go down here to this Aclea sparrowy. Okay. All right. And we'll add those. So the next thing you're going to do is go to select data. So we're going to skip upload and reference. Go to select data. We're going to pick our user data, which is all the sequences that we got. And we're going to hit all of our blast hits to see who's related to who. Once you do this, you click Save Selections, okay? And now we go to Muscle. Muscle is gonna give us our barcode. So Muscle's the generator for the DNA barcodes. And that will let us see what it looks like. So when you get this, you're gonna get a whole lot of stuff. Let's try to open this again. And you can see that at the top here, numbers one to 700. That re references the, the nucleotides, how many nucleotides you have, okay? Then we have conservation. What percent of our sequences are conserved among all of these? Okay. And you can see that as you get towards the middle here, the conservation drops. Um, some of these are 100%. Some of these are 75, 50, 60, and so on. Um, this shows the variation between all the sequences. So it shows where there's a lot of differences. And this shows the consensus where there's agreement among all of them. Okay. And then this is our first sample, and this is the top hit for it. Okay, here's the second, third, fourth hit. Here's our other sample, 
and the hits that it matches up with. And then this is the last one and what it matches with. And when you look at the barcodes, you can see that, you know, down here, there's really not much variation. There are a couple of little individual nucleotide differences here and here. But for the most part, they look pretty good. So we want to trim the alignment, get rid of these gray areas, right? That's going to help refine our data a bit. So this will automatically trim the beginning and end. Ah, see, perfect. We got a nice barcode here, okay? So the barcodes, you can kind of see these are all very similar to each other. Um, and the closest hit to this is up here. So now we're going to open up our sequence similarity chart. And this will tell us how similar or how different all of our sequences are. So I'm going to just overlay this for now. So number one, we're going to see what it's most similar to. Um, and so we're going to go right along the line here. And it's not very similar. The greatest one is 66.6. .6. So one and two, that's its closest hit. Um, so then we're going to look at number eight. Eight's closest match is number nine, which is at 98.93. So eight is either nine or 10, isopods or acidele. When this says this, acidele and isopoda species, that means that that is identifying the family, but it can't get to the genus or species. So you're at the limit of DNA with this. You can't go any further in. We can't determine which of these this is most closely related to. So that's our closest hit that we have. Number nine is most closely related to, let's see, 10. So, I'm sorry, uh, number 11 is most closely related to number nine. So nine is the best hit for this one. And 12 is most closely related to number eight. Okay. So we have some hits here. Okay. Um, but for our samples, number 11 is most similar to eight or nine or 10. So any of these and number eight is most similar to nine. Okay. And so that, this chart shows you what each species is. So you want to look at your sample, right, which is here, number eight, and here's sample eight. And we're going to go across and look at the highest percentage of similarities. So eight and nine and eight and ten have pretty much the same percent similarity, 98%. So that means number eight could be either of these two, but we don't know which one. And then number 11, okay, when you look at its highest percentage it looks like it's very similar number 11 is similar to either 9 or 10 and actually 12 12 is actually the best hit for it okay so this is related to this particular sequence okay and that's what the barcode tells you it allows you to identify what your samples are right so here are the samples from this particular group number one number eight number 11 this allows you to identify which samples are most closely related to their most uh, ideal hits that came from BLAST. So each of these, right, numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, were all the top BLAST hits for number 1. Numbers 9 and 10 were your top BLAST hits for 8, and number 12 is your top BLAST hit for 11. And so this allows you to determine the relationships between the different organisms, okay? So hopefully that helps. And uh, what you would then do is in your report, you would report on the identity of each one of these, number one, number eight, number 11, and their most closely related top blast hit, which has the same amount of DNA and the same DNA sequence that they have. Okay, when you look at these, your sequences are here. Okay, so you can see that number eight has almost an identical sequence to nine and 10. And then at number 11 is really close to number 12, with the exception of a couple of little mismatches here and there, which are totally fine. It could be the result of either a mutation or just sequencing. Okay? So that's it. We hope that this helped you guys figure this out. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Have a great day, guys. Bye.